Hi, I'm Ben Wilmore, and this video is brought to you by mastersacademy.com. That's where you're gonna find over 250 hours of me teaching Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. But let's get into this video. Here we're starting off a series about a feature in Photoshop or a section in Photoshop known as advanced blending. And to make sure that we devote enough time to each feature available, we're gonna split it up into multiple videos. In this video, we're gonna cover a feature known as fill opacity. It affects your images when you're doing two different things. Those are when you apply layer styles. That's things like bevel and emboss, drop shadow, and a whole list of other effects. The other is when you use blending modes. If you ever do either one of those, you'll wanna know about fill opacity. So let's dive in and see how it works. First, this screen is what we're gonna be talking about over the next few videos. And here you find the setting called fill opacity. And the way I got to this screen is with any layer active, I went to the letters FX at the bottom of my layers panel and I chose blending options. The only layer that's not available for it is a layer called background. And here you're gonna find the choice of opacity and fill opacity. Well, those two settings are identical to what you find at the top of the layers panel. There I also find opacity and fill. And fill here, they just don't have enough space for fill opacity. That's its official name. These two settings are gonna look like they do almost exactly, and I shouldn't even use the word almost. They're gonna look like they do exactly the same things most of the time. So in this case, I'll lower my opacity. And if I'm in my move tool, I can use the number keys on my keyboard to change this. So I'm gonna type the number four to get down to 40%. Then just to show you that it looks the same, I'm gonna duplicate this layer and drag it down. You can duplicate a layer by just holding down the option key, Alt and Windows, when you drag it to reposition it. Now I'm gonna take that duplicate, which right now has an opacity of 40%, and I'm gonna instead set the fill to 40%. When you're in the Move tool, you can usually use the number keys to change the opacity. To change the fill instead, hold down Shift. So right now, I'm gonna hold Shift and type the number four. And if you look at these two lines of text, in general, they look identical because they are functionally identical between those two features. It's only when you use blending modes or layer styles that you're gonna see a difference. So I actually have some layer styles applied to both of these layers. I've just disabled them by clicking on the eyeballs to turn them off. Now I'm gonna turn on the eyeball next to the word effects so you can see that there is definitely a difference between the two when we're working with layer styles. The layer styles on both of these layers are identical. So let's figure out how it works. I'm gonna set them both back to 100%. And let's first explore opacity. Opacity is simply gonna take the contents of this layer and lessen it to make it more and more transparent. So you can see through it. And once you get it down to zero, you can't see any part of the layer whatsoever. And it does the exact same thing to any styles that are applied. If I had a drop shadow underneath this or anything else, it's being lessened along with the rest. But then I'll work on the other layer, and this time I'm going to adjust fill. When I adjust fill, the layer styles that are applied to this layer are going to remain at full strength. And it's only the true contents, the pixels that make up the layer uh, that are going to be lessened. So now when I lower fill, you're going to see that less and less of the true contents of that layer uh, shows up. And if I get it all the way down to zero, now none of the original content that filled that layer is showing up and the only thing that's remaining is this inner glow style and this outer glow style that's applied to the layer. And so that's great whenever you want to have a layer style, but you don't want to have it with solid content that is defining where it's showing up. So that's great when it comes to layer styles, but there's a lot more to it. Let's switch to a different image. And in this image, I've constructed some special layers. Let's take a look at each layer. They contain identical information. Let me turn one of them on just so you can see what it looks like. And they're gonna cover up this photograph. This contains a gradient going from white at the top to black at the bottom, and then some yellow in the middle. And I have a layer mask here that's currently disabled. 
I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click on it, which will turn it back on, and therefore, the part of this layer mask that's black will cause part of this layer to disappear, become hidden. So that's what we have on the right side of the screen. Then we have an identical copy to what you originally saw in that layer up here. And its mask, if you look at it, has black in the opposite area. And therefore, this bottom layer is controlling the right side of my screen. And the top layer is controlling the left of my screen. But they contain, in general, identical information. Then let's select both of those layers. I just held the shift key and clicked on the bottom layer of those two. And let's switch through the various blending modes. You're gonna find that some blending modes act differently when it comes to those two layers, but right now they're not going to because both opacity and fill on both layers are 100%. So if I go through these various blending modes, you'll notice the right and left sides should look like they're giving us identical results because we're not using opacity and we're not using fill quite yet. They're just giving us some kind of weird looking results, but it's as if they were all sitting on a single layer because there's no difference between the right and left sides. Well now, let's take one of those layers and let's change our opacity of 50%. And let's change the other one's fill to 50%. So then if I select those two layers and now I cycle through those blending modes once again, now you're gonna notice that there are certain blending modes that act differently with those two settings of opacity and fill. There's a total of eight of them. When I hover over some of them, they look identical in right and left, like dissolve, darken, multiply. But when I get down to color burn, if you look right down the middle, you can see that that yellow strip looks different, especially at the top. And if you look at the bottom uh, right and left corners, you'll see they look quite different. Same is true in linear burn, where the yellowish color doesn't look so much different on each side, but if you look at my wife's arms, that's who's in the photograph there, you'll see applying the same content makes the results look quite different. Darker color is not gonna be any different because it's not one of the special blending modes. And then when we get down in here, we're gonna find once we get to color dodge, the two sides look different. When we get to linear dodge, same thing, both sides are different. Lighter color will be identical because it's not one of those special blending modes. Then this next section down in here, there are also going to be four special blending modes. And that's because many of these are just a combination of the blending modes that are found above. Overlay and soft light and hard light, they're not going to be special. But once I get to vivid light, you're going to find the right and left sides differ. And that's because vivid light behind the scenes is really a combination of color burn and color dodge, which are two of the special ones that are above. Then we have linear light, which is really a combination of linear burn and linear dodge from what's above. So it also looks special. Uh, pin light won't look uh, special because it's not one of the special choices. Hard mix mode, though, will look quite different, and so will difference mode. So there's a total in here of eight blending modes that act differently. Here's the blending mode pop-up menu that you usually see. And here in the darker background are the eight blending modes that treat opacity and fill differently from each other. So what exactly is it doing when you say that they're different from each other? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna come in here and hide these badge names and let's hide that little menu that was there and let's see if we can figure out the difference. Well, I'm gonna come in here and set my fill to 100 and I'll also set my opacity to 100 and we'll choose one of those special blending modes. In this case, why don't we use the one called color burn. Then on the right side, I'm gonna also use color burn mode and I'm gonna set its opacity and fill to 100. So the two sides should be identical. We're just using color burn mode. Now what is gonna happen when I lower the fill is it's going to take what you see on the left side of my screen, which is what this blending mode would look like with no special settings attached. Opacity at 100, fill at 100. And it's gonna just take that result that is there and it's gonna overlay it on top of the original picture and let me lower the opacity. 
That's what happens when I lower just opacity. I'll do that on the right side of my screen. When I do, you'll find that that area that used to be really dark, almost black, it just looks like black that you can see through. And it's not like you're getting a smoother or lesser effect there. Sure, it's blending in with the original image, but all it's doing is taking this blackness and letting you see the original picture through it. If, on the other hand, I adjust fill, then it's different. It's not just taking this result that we get at 100% opacity and letting us see through it. Instead, it's actually lessening the effect itself as if you could get inside of it and change the math that's used to calculate that result. So down in here, instead of having solid black that's gonna slowly fade out, when I lower fill, you're gonna find it looks exceptionally different. And in fact, most of the time, I find it will look better. And so I'm not just seeing a generic blackness that I can see through, instead it's actually lessened the mathematical uh, formula that's applying to the image. Let's see if I can show you that to you a little bit better by using a pure example. In this case, I have a document that contains a gradient that goes from black to white. And right here, I have a solid color. This was created just by going down to the adjustment layer icon and choosing solid color and choosing the color I wanted. After having done that, I added a layer mask and that's what this is on the right side of the layer. Any area of it that is black is hiding this layer and that's just why it doesn't extend all the way across my image. It's only in the middle. Then let's try one of those special blending modes. The one I'm going to choose is the one called hard mix and let's just see what it does. Remember, the areas on the far right and far left are not being affected because there's a layer mask not allowing it to show up in that area. So what hard mix is doing is it's applying what's known as a threshold. A threshold is where at some point, let's say it's this particular uh, brightness level right here, anything that's darker than that is going to become solid black. Anything brighter than it will become solid white. And right there is the threshold of where that change is going to be triggered. Well, if I double click on the left side of this layer, that's going to allow me to change the color that's in that layer. And it's just a shade of gray and all I'm going to do is make it brighter or make it darker. And you can see that all that's doing is changing the threshold. So now the threshold is this brightness level right here. Anything darker than that turns black. Anything brighter than that turns white. And that's how this particular blending mode usually applies. And usually you have that abrupt transition from black to white. But now let's adjust fill and see how it changes the algorithm that's being applied. Well, threshold is just an extreme version of another adjustment that is known as posterize. And as we lower the fill on this layer, it's going to posterize the image less and less. And that means it's going to allow for more and more shades between that black and white. And if I get it all the way down here, it's going to give me a nice smooth transition between the two and bring it back up when it's at 100, I get the absolute threshold. So in this case, when fill is set to 100, I get that abrupt transition. And now if I come up here and adjust opacity, we're just going to take that result where you see solid black and solid white and allow us to see through it a little bit to what's underneath, which is that gradient. And it might take me quite a bit to get it down where you can get a blended result, but you can tell that this is still a solid black area that you can see through to what's underneath. This is a solid white area that you can see through to what's underneath. But if I adjust fill, it's actually gonna change what's being applied, the way it's being blended with the image. And as I lower fill, we get to change that transition and make it so there's less posterization in a smoother end result. So when it comes to the eight blending modes that I listed that are special, what I'll end up doing is I'll usually adjust my fill first to try to get it in a range that I like. And then if I want to blend that further with the image that's underneath by not reducing fill any further, meaning I don't want any smoother of a transition that I have right now, well, then I need to adjust opacity to make it so I can simply see through that. 
Remember, the blending modes that are special are the ones that are highlighted here in a darker tone. And with each one of those, fill and opacity will work differently. So there are two instances when you want to care about the setting called fill opacity. The first is anytime you use a layer style. A layer style like bevel and emboss or drop shadow. Whatever the original contents of that layer was before you added those effects, if you want it so you can't see through it at all, then leave opacity and fill at 100. If, on the other hand, you want to lessen or completely let the original contents of that layer disappear, yet keep your layer style at full strength, then it's fill opacity you want to be adjusting. If you adjusted opacity, not only the contents of the layer would be lessened, but so would any effects applied to it. One of those effects you can apply to a layer is a blending mode. And there's a total of eight blending modes that are special. When you're using opacity with blending modes, all it's doing is it's applying the blending mode as if the opacity was set to 100%, taking whatever that result looks like, it acted like you merged those layers together to really make that permanent. Then you're just putting that result on top of the original picture and letting you see through it by lowering the opacity. Fill opacity, on the other hand, is actually lessening the math being used to blend those layers together. So if there was something that's creating harsh edges, it might give you softer edges. Or if there's something that is shifting the color in a really radical way, it will shift it in a lesser way. Whereas opacity is just taking your results and letting you see through them. Quite a bit of difference, but it takes a little bit of time to get used to it. I'm Ben Wilmore, and next time we'll explore more of the advanced blending options. I'll see you then.